Dude. What's up? Did you see Microsoft's E3 conference? Nah, I totally missed it. Oh. Well, did they finally show games this press conference? Did they show games? Yeah. Let me break it down for you. Please. Okay. Kiefer Sutherland riding a horse. That's a game? A fighting game where the wolf... A Hispanic mechanic being the crap out of zombies. Master Chief wearing a fucking cloak. A game with jetpacks, mechs, and guys with jetpacks riding those mechs and killing each other. Explosions. This is awful. Then that guy comes out of the mech, starts shooting other guys, more explosions. Master Chief takes his cloak off. Oh my god, he's got his classic helmet on. Oh, the wolf? That's Killer Instinct. What's going on, everybody? This is Mike. This is Natal. And welcome to a very special 60th episode of Fight Your Rival. Yeah, it's a special E3 episode, so it's going to be a pretty, pretty long rushdown. The rush. The rush. So E3 is finally here. It is Christmas for all gamers, for any genre, any console of the like. But since this is Fight Your Rival, we're going to focus on the fighting games of E3. And usually, you know, fighting games E3, we have one or two big titles. We've got a whole list this year. Yeah. We'll start off with probably the biggest reveal. You've probably heard about it by now, but Killer Instinct is officially coming back. Dude, when I heard that they were doing a new Killer Instinct, I was pretty excited. And to find out that it was an Xbox One exclusive, I was even more excited. I'm a little weary though. Game, I mean, it was early build, didn't look as great as I would have liked it to look, but I only saw like five to like maybe 15 seconds of the actual gameplay. But I'm excited to bring the title back. Oh, I'm very excited. I had a lot of fun checking out all the trailers. Uh, Mad Cat streamed the game a lot. They, they had like pro players, guys like Mike Ross, Ryan Hart going at it. But yeah, the game looks fun. I think, you know, it does have that kind of Street Fighter 4 cartoony art style. I think the game looks very pretty. It's nice to see an, uh, fi a fighting game run on next-gen hardware. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll have to see more when the game actually comes out. We could play it, but it looks like fun. We got to see Jago and Saber Wolf. Yes. Um, Glacius is confirmed. Yeah. I think today also a few other characters got confirmed. You know, the crazy combos are there, the mm -hmm. c -c -c combo breakers are there. And the ultra, ultra, yeah. The I super excited that. announcer. So it seems like the core components are there. Everything I've been reading on Twitter, I I've heard mixed reactions to how it plays. Yeah. I think it seems that people are, the more someone's attached to the old Killer Instinct, the more of an adjustment it is, which makes sense. Yeah. But then again, when was the last time you played Killer Instinct? Yeah. I don't remember the last time I played Killer Instinct. If you guys out there never played Killer Instinct and you're like, what's Killer Instinct? It's actually going to be another free-to-play game. Yeah, which is a, it's a very interesting trend we've mm -hmm. been seeing in the last few weeks. We, first, we have DOA Core getting announced. Yeah. Tekken Revolution just dropped yesterday. Yeah. yeah, I guess fighting game companies are finally willing to kind of give up their game a little bit, let people try it, and then suck them in. So I think the concept's great for Killer Instinct, especially since it's an older franchise that hasn't been around in a long time. Uh, I don't know whether or not Filthy Rich had a say in that, because he is now actually working on the game. So shout out to Filthy Rich for bringing back KI and hoping that you bring just as much hype as you did in the Tekken community you do for this game and it turns out to be something stellar. Oh yeah. He didn't say a whole lot when he was on stream, but he did mention that, you know, he's gonna put as much fan fighting game community fan service as he can within the game. So whether we see like a funny catchphrase come up or you know something that we really recognize from mm -hmm. tournaments and events, so I'm looking forward to Killer Instinct, and you know, if you're getting an Xbox One, you're going to play it for free. Yeah. You're going to get to try it. So At launch, so there yeah. you go. The next fighting game, probably just as talked about, just as anticipated. Guys, we finally have a new Super Smash Bros. coming out. Finally, yeah. And not only is it coming out for the Wii U, it's also coming out for the 3DS. So we're getting two versions of the new Smash Brothers. Now, I was never really the biggest Smash fan, but I do play it if people do want to play. And I have to say, the new Smash Brothers looks really good. Graphically, it's pretty. The 3DS version has almost like a cartoony, almost like cel shaded kind of look to it. And then the Wii U version is a lot more polished, a lot more rendered characters, and it looks pretty sick. 
Yeah, I mean, it's great to see the Smash series finally in HD. Because mm -hmm. this will be the first one uh, you know, since the Wii came out. Yep. And, you know, game looks like a lot of fun on both platforms. I'm not sure if there's going to be any cross-play or anything like that. Probably not. Nintendo doesn't think about things like that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see when it drops. But obviously, you know, one of the biggest things surrounding Smash Bros. is the fact that Mega Man is the guest character. Yes, Mega Man. It's about time Mega Man somewhere. Sorry he wasn't in Marvel, but you got him in Smash. Mega Man's finally back in a fighting game, so thanks Nintendo for that one. And don't worry, it's not the fat, ugly Mega Man in Cross Tekken. No, this that one the, does not count. This is the adorable, small, NES-style Mega Man. You know, Nintendo's finally taking him back. And I think, you know, a lot of Smash fans are excited. A lot of Capcom heads are excited. Mm -hmm. I'm personally excited. I'll probably play him. Who doesn't want to be Mega Man? Yeah, who doesn't? And if you're wondering if they added any other characters, they're bringing the Villager in from Animal Crossing, so all you Animal Crossing fans could lose your marbles because the Villager's in it. And the one character I thought was stupid until I saw the actual trailer and thought it was amazing is the Wii Fit Trainer. Oh yeah, I think that's so sick. It's, it kind of reminds me when they dropped uh, Mr. Game & Watch. Yeah. It's like just bringing that, that odd innovation to the game and just her, her specials where she's just throwing other trainers at you. Like, I think it's hilarious. I think she's going to be a popular character. So that game's going to be dropping, I believe, around this time next year. Okay. They, I think all they said was 2014, but I, I think a spring release is what people are talking about. So if you're a diehard Smash fan or you're ready to jump on for the first time, you can look forward to that game for Wii U and 3DS yeah. some, sometime next year. Sometime next year. So you got some time to save some money. So besides Smash Brothers and Killer Instinct being announced at E3, there was actually some new news for Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate, and it's in regards to the playable characters in the game. Very exciting news. So we already know that Jackie Bryan from Virtua Fighter is coming to the DOA. Mm -hmm. We know that fan favorite Ayn is coming back. And we they revealed two new characters for the game during E3. Uh, Rachel from Ninja Gaiden. Yes. Uh, the blonde vixen. Yeah. Who looks pretty cool. It was cool to see her fight next to Hayabusa. And also finally, finally, Leon, who we all kind of knew was coming. If you guys are wondering how these characters look and how they play, definitely check out the DOA 5 Ultimate trailer. And at the end of the trailer, they really showed a lot of cool team-ups, like tag team team-ups, almost like specialized throws, almost a la Tekken Tag 2. Not sure if that was in the first DOA 5, because I didn't really play too much of the team section of the game, but it looks really epic. If it's new, I think it's pretty sweet. Oh yeah, when uh, Kazumi and Hayate were doing their crazy throw teleport yeah. nonsense. Yeah, I'm really hyped for DOA 5 Ultimate, even though there is going to be that core version, at least mm -hmm. for PS3. The characters look so great that I'm probably just going to pick up the full thing. Yeah, definitely. It looks like one of those games I wouldn't mind sampling through the whole cast one more time just because of the overall look of the game. Absolutely. So definitely looking forward to that game when it drops this fall on current consoles. Yes, current consoles. So if you're getting excited about all these new fighting games and you know the thought of playing Killer Instinct on Xbox One, you're like, wait, oh, I'm going to need a stick. Yeah, obviously. Don't worry guys, as always, Mad Cats has you covered. They unveiled the Tournament Edition 2, mm -hmm. which is you know, their latest standard fight stick, kind of like what we have in front of us. And uh, it looks very similar. The core model looks similar to what we have now. And yeah. It's kind of just a black stick with red buttons. But the good thing is, if you don't like how that looks, Mad Cats has finally made their stick customizable. Oh, finally. How easy is it to customize though? Uh, from the video I saw, you literally can just press a button on the front of the stick. The, the stick itself opens up. And whether you want to put a sandwich in there or just change out your plate and change out your buttons, it looks very easy. And um, I think for the first time, the cord is detachable. Hmm. So instead of the compartment, you can just take off the cord, wrap it up, put it inside your stick, which I think is even better. And uh, you know how Mad Cats loves to do exclusive sticks for special games as yeah. we hold our cross tech and it's so caliber sticks. Five, yeah. So they will have a special Killer Instinct stick. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to get either one of the two sticks. I uh, hope they make a little cover for that button because I can see people at Corny's complaining that they press the button and the, their stick pops up like perfection. Remember that, guy, that game, Pop Up Perfection? Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll be like that. So it'll be like perfection. The button's flying in their face <laughs> and they lose grand finals and it's all Mad Cat's TE2's fault. I mean, that could be the new meta game. Like, you know, pop, your, pop your opponent's stick. Yeah. You know, it's like playing trouble. Mad Cat's always delivers, so I, I think the stick will be solid. I'm still very curious to see what Adark's gonna roll out. Yeah. Because if they come out swinging and they're like, hey, you know, they thrive on their dual modded stick, mm -hmm. if they're like, hey, if you use this for your 360 and your Xbox One, that would give them a big edge. That would be huge. So, you know, we'll see what all the companies, Hori too, you know, we gotta see what they come out with, but Mad Cats has the first next gen stick right now. It looks pretty good. Yeah, so thanks, Mad Cats. I was wondering how the hell I was gonna play those fighting games on the Xbox One. 
Now we know. Now we know. So you seem pretty hyped for Killer Instinct and this new Xbox One stick. Yeah, I am. So is it safe to say you're you're buying your Xbox One launch day? Yeah, I actually reserved it the day of the Microsoft press conference on Amazon.com. Um, I think when it comes to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, both companies have a lot to offer for different types of players and different types of consumers. And to be perfectly honest, the Microsoft console falls into my type of category. Even with all the restrictions and complaints people have about the console and the console hasn't even been released yet. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, Microsoft won me over with the games. Yeah. And it wasn't even a matter of, you know, who is technically better. It's just kind of... What they showed off appealed to me as a gamer. You know, I love shooters. Titanfall made me lose my mind. Yes. You know, I love Capcom games. Dead Rising 3. Uh, so all those exclusives I saw. Plus, you know, I always love playing Halo and Gears of War. So a lot of it's kind of just sticking with the, the franchise and the console that I love. You know, obviously Xbox One is perfect. It does have these limitations. Um, but the limitations, you know, I'm always online. I only really, you know, buy games once in a while and I buy them new. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me personally, it's not going to be a big deal. I, I feel for, you know, a military person that wants to play games with no internet. You know, I think, you know, obviously PS4 is for them. I don't know. Overall, my thoughts, you know, I'm an Xbox One guy, but Sony had a great showing. They did. This was the first E3 in a while that really brought back, like, the console war feeling. Yes, definitely. It felt and, like WCW, oh. Monday Night Raw again. And, you know, you might disagree with me, but, like, even as an Xbox fan, Sony won. Yeah. In the fact that they made people stand up, applaud, scream, you know, and they announced that no restrictions, no DRM, no anything, you know. They made that, that funny little sharing video yeah. where it was literally just one person passing the game to the other. So they definitely had the more impressive, you know, fan-friendly showing. I'll mm -hmm. give them that. And PS4 looks phenomenal. I mean, you know, whenever there's a console war, everybody wins if you're a gamer, so. Yeah. And I'm definitely not shooting down Sony at all. Like, I will definitely purchase a PlayStation 4 in due time. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Uncharted series. I really love everything that Naughty Dog's doing. I'm even buying The Last of Us with a PS3 right now, this Friday. So when Quantic Dreams comes out with something great, when they show a new Uncharted, when a couple of the exclusives are really good, that's when I'll head towards the PlayStation 4. And if Sony really wants my money quickly and easy, if they were smart, they would get some type of exclusive rights to Tekken X Street Fighter mm -hmm. or exclusive content, and I would definitely buy a console for that game if that's the better one. Absolutely. That is the one edge. I mean, you know, opinion is split on Killer Instinct, but it's the only exclusive fighting game out right now. Yeah. If you want to play Killer Instinct, you can get Xbox One. So... You know, I think Sony, with their connection with Tekken, I think they could easily pull something like that. Yeah, and Tekken Revolution didn't come out for Xbox 360 at all. Just PlayStation. Tekken Hybrid. Just PlayStation. So, like, some companies still have roots to Sony. If Sony does everything right, this could be their PS2 era all over again. Like, the PS2 era was dominant. It was amazing. And to touch up on the, you know, comment you made about the military personnel person who would like to play it, but they can't be online. I think Microsoft is already thinking above everyone else and not just with the technology we have now technology is moving so far and so advanced who knows what type of wi-fi or internet or any form of capability will be available two three years from now some phones are ready you can make a hotspot. so if the military personnel if anyone in the military has a, a, a phone with a hotspot, you can hotspot your phone it'll connect the, your xbox one that one time you need for the day and then you turn off your hotspot and then you can play your Xbox One games. So there are ways around it. It's just unfortunate. It's not the convenient ways that we're used to. We're gonna have to come up with new methods and new ways of playing games, but that's the beauty of technology and games. That was beautifully said. I mean, it, it is. it could very well be that, like you said, Microsoft is just playing their console for a world that is eventually gonna always be online. Yeah. Which, you know, people have split opinions on that alone, but if you look at it that way, it doesn't really, it's an easy thing to complain about, but if you think about how you use your Xbox now as it is, it's not gonna be very different. No, not at all. The minute you turn your Xbox on, I mean, like you said, I'm perpetually online all the time. Yeah. I mean, the only time I'm not online is if the machine is off. Granted, I do, you know, I am a little weary if there's system maintenance for like three to four days, Am I going to be completely blocked out? Probably not. Microsoft's pretty good with customer care. What they'll probably do is exclude or find something in the software to give it that option. Like from this date to this date, there is no need for checkup online to play the games. I doubt they'll shaft us completely and be like, nope, sorry, your machine is not working for four days. And if they do do that, then that's when Sony is definitely going to go on the way. So let's hope that doesn't happen. No. Like with anything, we'll have to wait till November when these systems are out, you know. System launches always have their kinks to work out. Yes, they always do. 
But uh, hopefully these systems are advanced enough that we don't have another red ring situation yeah. or yellow light or exploding systems or PSN getting hacked, any of that nonsense. Yeah, and shout out to Microsoft for being great at marketing, putting making a day one version of the console. Mm -hmm. That's why I reserved it. it. They literally just wrote day one 2013 on my controller and gave me an exclusive achievement, an achievement that you only could get if you buy it day one. He sold me. He gave me the most stupidest little things and I'm all for it. Like, it's fantastic. And other things come with that day one edition. Actually, exclusive content for specific games, uh, launch titles are coming out. You get specific things for like Forza 5 and a couple of other titles. And the one that I'm excited about is for Dead Rising 3, you actually get Chuck Green and Frank West from the other two Dead Rising as playable characters. That's freaking awesome. That's incredible. I mean, I do like the new sloppy mechanic guy, but that's that's great fan service yeah. for Dead Rising fans. I like that Capcom's going down the more minority route and they finally got a Hispanic all up in there. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. But all in all, it's a great time for everyone, whether you're a Sony fan, a Microsoft fan, a Nintendo fan. New games, rejoice. The greatest form of entertainment is back on top, even though it never left the top. Exactly. But we got so much stuff to be excited for. Oh my God, save your money, make new friends, because you're going to need people to buy you a lot of gifts this Christmas. Yeah, make sure you have one friend that's getting each system. You can play those new Wii U games. Oh yeah, definitely. Play some Xbox One games, play some PS4. Like I said, console wars, everyone wins. Mm -hmm. You take away all the technicality and there's just a crap ton of incredible games coming out. So. Yeah, and this is just first year, guys. I know you saw the videos. Imagine what we're going to get two to three years from now. I'm scared. I'm excited and scared. So obviously when something as massive and as exciting and game changing as E3 happens. No pun intended with the game changing. <laughs> Twitter's always on fire, mm -hmm. which is perfect because right now it's time for the Tweets of the Week. Tweet of the Week. So the wildfire on Twitter was huge this week. We got seven tweets for you guys. Of course, mostly all of them are E3, Xbox One, or PS4 related. The first one's from Ray Fonseca, and he writes, R.I.P. Hashtag Xbox One. And underneath is a photo of the Xbox One with 2013 to 2013 underneath it. That'd be a horrible lifespan. And, you know, that, that, that's a popular image just going around. Of, you know, for all the Xbox One haters, it's going to happen. Every system has them. Yeah, it is what it is. Of course, that tweet is just one of the many that's kind of cracking on Xbox One right mm -hmm. now. Understandably. And uh, this next one comes from Mal Suarez. And he writes, it's all over. PS4 rules. And he posted another kind of viral image that says, go home, Xbox, you're drunk. You know, when comparing the specs of the two systems. Which, you know, at first glance... My Xbox One might look crappy, but wait till they come out. It doesn't matter what the mechanics or the guts are inside the machine, it's how you use them. Perfect example, the Saturn was way more stronger than the PS1, but the problem was the Saturn was way more difficult to program for yeah. than the PS1, so the PS1 surpassed the Saturn. It can happen again. History has a tendency to repeat itself. Indeed it does. And the third one is actually just a positive overall tweet, and it's from Hector Sanchez, one of the producers of Another Round. You know, the guys who brought MK9 and Injustice, and he writes, Ah! Killer Instinct. I think that was a good chunk of reaction, and uh, you know, obviously everyone's hype, and it makes sense that uh, Hector, uh, both producer and kind of an old school Mortal Kombat guy, those two franchises are very intertwined. I feel like they have the same fan base. They did. Killer Instinct was kind of, in a way, Nintendo's Mortal Kombat back in the day, so... Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to see the great, one of the creators of Mortal Kombat just get, get hype over this new game. Of course, Killer Instinct wasn't the only fighting game people were getting hype over. Nope. Smash Brothers was the talk of the town on Tuesday, and Robert Hughes writes, Nintendo should just buy the Mega Man IP. I've always thought so. They've done more in that minute trailer than Capcom have in 10 years. So true. It, yeah, it's kind of depressing, but it's very true. I mean, no new Mega Man game, you know, a sloppy version of Mega Man and Cross Tekken. Mega Man Universe, and it looked incredible, and then they're like, yeah, we changed our mind. And Nintendo comes out of nowhere and has the Mega Man we all know and love as mm -hmm. one of the prominent characters in Smash, so in a, in a Namco-developed game of all things. So, mm -hmm. Crazy yeah. world we live in right now. Yeah, that's video game today for you, but you know, I agree with this guy. guy. I'm hyped that Mega Man's back, and yeah. it's exciting for everyone. And our next tweet of the week comes from OBS Master Steve, and he writes, At Fight Your Rivals, still, still waiting on that Chrono Trigger 3. Hashtag E3. I mean, Square fans do have that new Final Fantasy to look forward to. Mm -hmm. They do, and it looks incredible. I'm, I'm excited. I hated 13, and the only last two I thought were great was 7 and 8. We can argue about that for hours. But 15 looks great. It looks interesting. The, fighting, the, the new mechanics look really good. It's not your typical old-school RPG. But that's what I expect with the next-gen console. It's not my typical old-school RPG. And our next E3 tweet comes from Dan Toy, and he writes, Avoiding the whole Xbox One versus PS4 debate. Instead, I've got eyes on those new Wii U games. Hashtag Nintendo Kid. 
I've got to say, Nintendo's Direct Showcase on Tuesday morning was one of the most impressive parts of E3 for me. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, it was great to see Bayonetta 2. I knew that it was coming out. I was a little weary. I thought maybe they probably just closed shop and decided not to make it anymore because of maybe sluggish sales to the Wii U. But you know what? I guess they started it and they were like, might as well finish it. And it looks cool. And I'm actually happy my sister owns the Wii U so then I can actually play Bayonetta 2 when it comes out. Oh, I'm going to be over a lot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're over right now. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just be playing a lot of Wii U. Exactly. And the last tweet of the week is from good old Filipino champ and it's about the PS4 and the Xbox One and he writes, I'm buying both PS4 and Xbox One because I don't give a fuck. Couldn't say it better myself. It's true. If I won a lot more tournaments, I would be able to buy both at launch, but I can't, so I'm choosing the one. And then I'll get the four next year. Yeah, so if you're wondering how the fighting game pros are feeling, at least, you know, F Champ has a, has a neutral look on everything. Yeah, they're playing Switzerland right now. So it'll probably, it really sways, depends on when, when Tekken comes out, what Soul Calibur comes out for, MK, all of them. Multi-platform, multi we all win. Solo platform, one platform is going to definitely dominate over the others. Mm -hmm. In the FGC, at least. I have to say, just to close off the show, I think this is the most interesting time for the fighting game community since maybe Street Fighter 4 dropped. Yes. Because for the first time, we have new types of models for fighting games. Uh, Free-to-play is getting explored heavily. Uh, we've got console-exclusive fighters, so it's, it's really interesting. It's feeling like the old days, in a way. Yeah, I'm very excited. Who knows what the future holds, and... The one thing I can tell about the future is that we will be here every week letting you guys know what the news is, what's going on until the launch for, of these new consoles and then some, and then the launches for those and so on and so forth until we die. So I'm here to play games for the rest of my life and I'm here to let you guys know about them. And I'm Natal from Fight Your Rival. This is Mike from Fight Your Rival. And remember guys, keep evolving. Keep evolving.